As I mentioned earlier today, Russian President Vladimir Putin reportedly said talks with Ukraine returned to an impasse and that Moscow's military operation in Ukraine would undoubtedly achieve what he said were its, quote, noble objectives. He claimed, we are helping and saving people. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Zelensky, in an address to his nation, said his forces still are not getting all that they need from supporting allies to end the war sooner, as Kiev braces for an eastward campaign from Russia. Joining me now to talk about this and more is U.S. Congressman Mike Waltz, a member of the House Armed Services Committee and a decorated Special Forces officer. He serves as the representative for the 6th Congressional District of the Sunshine State. Congressman Waltz, welcome back to the program. Good to be with you, Tony. All right, what is your latest assessment on the situation in Ukraine, based on what we're hearing today? Well, we're seeing a bit of an, uh, you know, what we call in the military an operational pause uh, as the Russians lick their wounds, they refit their forces, reorganize them, uh, put them under a new commander uh, who was pretty well known as the butcher of Syria uh, uh, and focus, strategically focus on eastern Ukraine, which, by the way, is the most energy rich, is the most industrialized uh, and the portion that Putin has always wanted. On top of that, uh, he wants to take as much of the Black Sea coastal area. We're seeing that with Mariupol. Uh, we may or may not see a drive on Odessa. I think this is a, a golden opportunity. Uh, uh, Tony, we should be giving Zelensky the more advanced weaponry, the more offensive weaponry that he has long been asking for since last year, since before the invasion, he could be hitting those Russian formations right now while they're most vulnerable, while they're trying to reorganize. Uh, if we would only give them everything they're asking for, that's long range artillery. That's more of the Turkish drones they've used uh, so effectively. Uh, it's additional radars and it's the intelligence and targeting packages that only the United States can provide to hand those to the Ukrainians so that they can target Russian forces. We've got to help Zelensky win Yet Jake Sullivan, the president's national security advisor, just said on the Sunday talk shows that we're trying to help him get to the negotiating table. We shouldn't be playing for a tie in Ukraine, Tony. We should be helping the good guys win and giving them everything they need to do so. So what is the holdup on this uh, critical weaponry that they're asking for? Well, it's been the holdup all along. Uh, even when I was out there last year, uh, what the Ukrainians were hearing from the White House was that stingers were too provocative. They were too escalatory. Anti-ship missiles to help defend their ports were too provocative. Uh, and so this kind of fear of Putin and the fear of what he might do is still driving our policy. Uh, and when, when, you, when you take that approach for a dictator, they're going to push until they meet, meet steel. And I think that is giving him room to escalate. Uh, my fear is that you're going to see chemical weapons next uh, as Putin drives up that escalation ladder. And then separately, Tony, look, let's get serious about the sanctions. Uh, the, the Biden administration's patting themselves on the back for tough sanctions. Yet even the newest ones uh, Biden just announced have loopholes for Putin's energy sector. They are still bringing in billions of dollars a week from European countries who are all you know, proclaiming their support for Ukraine they need to take the tough measures and cut off uh, uh, his revenue. And by the way, China is still doing business. Countries like South, Amer uh, South Africa and Brazil, not to mention India. We need to get serious and have some tough conversations with them, too, including putting on the table secondary sanctions on their banks and companies that are doing business with Russia. Uh, earlier today, after his meeting with the president of Belarus, uh, Vladimir Putin said, quote, the sanctions blitzkrieg against Russia have failed. Now, granted, I know he's putting a spin on it, but is there some truth that uh, these sanctions have not been as successful as this administration would have us to believe? Well, the ruble has recovered. Uh, the Russian currency is recovering. Their stock market is recovering. Uh, Chinese banks are stepping in to do uh, the business that European banks were, were doing in terms of brokering uh, Russian oil and gas. Uh, and look, I think Chinese uh, private equity uh, and state-owned enterprises seeing a buying opportunity. They are stepping in and taking equity in Russian mines, 
in Russian mineral, uh, rare earth mineral, and other types of processing facilities, and of course their oil and gas sector. So uh, uh, China is filling the void that some European and American companies have stepped out of. But as long as there's loopholes for oil, the oil and gas sector, Russia, uh, Putin will continue to be able to fuel his war machine. Final question on this topic, uh, Congressman Waltz. If America were to step forward in a strong way, as you're suggesting, to give the material material that uh, they are requesting in Ukraine, could this possibly take Russia out of the equation if they're defeated by Ukraine as a formidable foe going forward to the United States? I think this could largely neuter uh, Russia's conventional national security apparatus. Remember, they still have a capable nuclear uh, 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 security force, but it could definitely set them back for many years. My problem, Tony, is if, if we help Zelensky play for a tie, Putin gobbles up additional portions of eastern Ukraine and it settles back into trench warfare like it did in 2014. He'll lick his wounds for the next five or six years and then he'll be at it again. Right. Just a uh, matter of time. I got to help him play for a win. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, this administration is playing not to lose rather than That's playing right. uh, to win. I, I want to turn our attention now to uh, to really the battle that's waging here at home over the hearts and minds of children. You've stepped into that battle with a new book, a, a book designed for children ages 6 through 10. It's the uh, Dawn of the Brave. Tell us about it. Well, Tony, I'm really excited about it. This is one of a series of books. It's a subscription, actually, by Brave Books. You cannot find them on Amazon. We're deliberately not putting it on Amazon. You can only find them on bravebooks.com. Uh, each book that will arrive to your children every month will have a traditional conservative theme, family, faith, the Constitution. Uh, in the case of my book, it's about serving your country uh, and coming together as a team to serve a cause higher than yourself, which has been you know, my life as a Green Beret and, and now in Congress uh, about service. But at the end of the day, with what we've seen uh, with COVID that exposed the garbage that's being taught in our schools, what we're seeing in our universities, what we've seen in Virginia uh, in the election of Yunkin, and now we're seeing with Disney, uh, this is a fight for the hearts and minds of, of our children. Uh, my, my point is we're pushing back. I think parents have had a have real wake up call, but what do we fill that void with? Uh, and, and brave books in this subscription are good, wholesome content. Uh, and, and for every subscription that someone may order off of bravebooks.com, $15 is going to Samaritan's Purse to support Ukrainian refugees. So I, I, it's just really a blessing and my honor uh, to, to engage this way. I'm a dad. I've got an 18-year-old and a three-month-old. Uh, and, and I want them learning the types of values that are in uh, these books not the activist agenda that we're seeing in our libraries, in our schools, community centers, and across this nation. I, I think the best way to go after the darkness is shine light. And uh, that's exactly what you're doing here. Uh, Dawn of the Brave, to find out more, bravebooks.com. Mike Waltz, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Okay, thank you, Tony. Appreciate it.